Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got for you a first timer's guide to writing Amtrak. All right, we are so excited to break this down for you because we remember our first ride on Amtrak. A <laughs> long we, time ago. We did not know anything, and we made so many mistakes uh, that it's just kind of funny now. But we're going to break down what those were, how you can avoid them, and what to expect at the train station, on the train, mm -hmm. and throughout your ride yes. on Amtrak. So you have a wonderful vacation or trip. Uh, much better experience than, <laughs> than we did than, our, first, we did time. our yeah. first time. So, <laughs> as a first time rider, uh, the first question you may be asking is, when and how do I get to the train station? Mm -hmm. And the thing you need to know is, it is very dependent on the train station you are at. Mm -hmm. So each station is different. There is no way to know whether a particular station has parking. Most of them do not. A few mm -hmm. of them do. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, we just take an Uber uh -huh. or grab a cab to the station. Mm -hmm. uh, or if we're, we try to stay at a hotel that's right near it and then walk and to then the station. Walk. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the easiest thing mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Or like oftentimes, like someplace like, like New York, you could stay very close um, yeah. and just walk. Or you Chicago do, or someplace like that. You do need to arrive uh, about an hour ahead of time. So it's mm -hmm. not like an airline. Mm -hmm. At the you, most, really. Yeah, you, you don't need to get there three hours ahead like an airline there's no, no security to go through there's no there's no TSA to no screening go through and if you already have uh, your ticket that's if you have the Amtrak app which you should download before you go right have your ticket on the app and you're all set to go if you don't have access to that go ahead and print it out and then you'll have it it'll just be the little QR code you will have to have this on the train more than one time so make sure you keep track of it that's how come I think it's the best to have it in the app in the Amtrak app because that way when the conductor comes around sometimes when they switch conductors during a journey they do come back by and check tickets again yeah. or they try to Mostly, it's just so they can confirm where you're going because they are going to put that above your seat. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So when you get to the station, you're going to want to go to the counter if you have any check bags. Yeah, because then you need to check them there. Mm -hmm. And so you need to do that at least 30 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. before the train leaves. Mm -hmm. So they have time to get them on. If you're not checking bags, you, you could arrive a little bit later, mm -hmm. but the stations are the bigger ones are a lot of fun mm -hmm. and you, you probably want to arrive you know at least an hour ahead to check it out right especially if you're in a big one like new york city mm -hmm. or kansas city mm -hmm. chicago one of those really yeah. nice right uh, and also you do want to get there early if you're in a sleeper car or if you have um first class tickets and you have access to the metropolitan lounge at some of those bigger stations you most definitely want to get there early because you want to hang out in the lounge and sometimes they've got uh free food and drinks and things like that and it's just kind of fun also to you know meet mm -hmm. fellow passengers there as well yeah so what happens then is before they uh before the train is is loaded they'll start by loading the sleeper car passengers mm -hmm. on if you're in the metropolitan lounge they'll basically at most stations walk you to the mm -hmm. train or tell you when it's time to go and basically take you mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. and then after that is done for the most part then they will announce for coach and or business class mm -hmm. boarding and then you're just going to follow the signs follow the crowd there'll mm -hmm. be hundreds of people going for the most part uh if you're starting at a big station mm -hmm. now at that point you just go find your seat they check your tickets and make sure everything everyone is in mm -hmm. uh, the right spot yes and if you are in sleeper car you'll already have a room assignment and that will be on the email and on your and or on your ticket it'll say your train your car number it'll say car number and you'll see that uh, in a digital display outside each car um, as you're walking on the platform and there'll be amtrak staff out there directing you they'll say are you in coach or are you in sleeper and they'll you know tell you hey keep going three more cars down and you'll be in the right spot or whatever the case may be so that's on there and your room number if you are in coach a couple of things can happen 
if you're in, you bought a ticket and you already got a seat assignment, then that then you're all set. It'll show, tell you your car number and your seat assignment, and and you're good to go. If you do not have a seat assignment on your ticket, then it is open seating. But once you choose your seat, when you get on the train, you are not going to move from that seat. So that's your seat. Yeah, and business class they should be assigning you a seat correct yes and you'll have that ahead of time yeah you so. actually get to pick it out when you're purchasing yeah. your ticket so choose your seat wisely we're going to go over a little bit about what we like to where we like to sit uh and a little bit here as well mm -hmm. but uh you can also bring food with you from the station mm -hmm. so a lot of these stations have places to buy food mm -hmm. i know like in new orleans we always like to buy a subway a, sub yeah we always buy a subway <laughs> sub uh, from new orleans i don't know why i was sunset limited in the city of new orleans but we always buy that and yeah. a couple of the stations have the bigger stations all have everything uh, food you can buy yeah, from sit down restaurants that you could order to yeah. subs and you know jamba juice dunkin donuts chick-fil-a mcdonald's all that stuff so you have lots of choices at some of those other ones now if you're that's mostly if we're in coach if we're in supercar your meals are included mm -hmm. uh, but even in coach you can buy stuff from the cafe correct yes but sometimes you just don't want to eat that same cafe mm -hmm. food yeah especially like if you're on meals. a longer ride yeah. It gets old really quick because it's, you know, um, this certain type of, of food that they've got. So there. you can bring uh, some drinks and you can bring food on with you. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a sleeper car, you don't need to bring any drinks. We made that mistake. We brought a whole <laughs> six pack of drinks and then we realized <laughs> drinks are free. So we should let those around. I tried to find someone to give them to. And yeah, nobody we had, wanted them. We had a lot of drinks. We were stuck with a bunch of Pepsis. Now, you might be wondering <laughs> if you should uh, check your luggage or not. And mm -hmm. if you are uh, in coach, we normally check our luggage just because we don't want to have to keep track of it. If you're in a super liner sleeper car, we normally recommend do not check your luggage mm -hmm. because in, on those, there's plenty of room on the lower level mm -hmm. to store mm -hmm. your luggage. Now, if you're in a view liner sleeper car, we check our luggage because there's a lot less room on yeah. those. We have a video detailing all the room types mm -hmm. that you can get, and it kind of shows you what storage you have in there. So check that out if you want to know. But on a view liner, we always check our, our luggage as well. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay, so if if we're saying if you're in coach, as far as luggage is concerned, you do still get those two free check bags. Right. So you're free to do either. There is a luggage rack. It is downstairs. So if you have a seat upstairs and you want to keep an eye on your bag, that's going to be hard to do. Um, and there is storage overhead, kind of like on an airplane, but there are no doors. It's just open. Right. Um, and there is minimal space for storing underneath um, the seat in front of you very very minimal there is a little seat pocket in front as well or there is enough leg room in coach to we've actually had our bag with us there yeah. before because we got on um, mid route and there was no room for our bags in the in the yeah. luggage rack area and we weren't riding very far so we right. just slid the bags in front of our legs and there was actually still room for us to get up and yeah. move around so if you're not going, I wouldn't recommend that for a long journey no. to keep your big bag with you. If, if you're concerned about that, just check it. Um, they do a good job. We've watched them all over the country um, handling the bags. They do a good job with them. So I would just check it and yeah. forget it. <laughs> Most of the major stations also have a red cap service, mm -hmm. which is for anyone that needs help with their bags or themselves getting from the station to the train. Mm -hmm. So they will have a person that will... Uh, they wear red hats, which they is what literally it's have red caps. Red it's cap a ball, service, uh, a red ball cap. <laughs> they will push you either in a wheelchair or, however, drive yeah, you on a golf, golf cart, cart. Mm -hmm. uh, to get to the train, load everything on for you, take care of all of it. So, if that's something that you need or are interested in, right when you get there, say, "I need to tell the check-in person I need red cap service," mm -hmm. and they will set it all up for you, and you won't have to think about a thing because they'll actually come get you when the train mm -hmm. is boarding and just. Yep put you on the train basically yeah they do yeah they do a great job and that is for both coach and sleeper car passengers so it's for 
all passengers on the train. Yeah. If you need some assistance, let them know. And there is no fee for that service, but it is, you know, a tip is definitely, I'm sure, greatly appreciated. So yes. they usually do such a nice job and all of the the red cap attendants, I've never used it, but I've seen a lot of them. They always seem so happy to be doing their job. So mm -hmm. definitely I would strongly consider giving them a tip. Yeah, so what you're going to expect food-wise when you get on the train, that's going to be the next big thing. You're on the train, mm -hmm. you're all settled, you're like, mm. okay, what do we get to eat? Now you're hungry. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Amtrak does a really good job of feeding people for the most part, and the hours are open late. So mm -hmm. we used to worry like, oh, we're getting on a train at like 7 p.m. Are we going to get to eat? You will get to eat. Mm -hmm. Or if you get on early... You will get to eat. They do. They don't like cut dinner off at five thirty or something. Right, and just shut everything uh, down. So you will get on if you're in coach. You have access to the cafe, mm -hmm. which has all kind of hot and cold food. It's open pretty late. A lot of times open till about ten. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one person that runs that cafe, and they do go on a dinner break for about an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the rest of the time, mm -hmm. and they'll let you know. Yeah, they'll let you know. They're going to be open. And then if you're in sleeper car, your meals are included in the dining car. Mm -hmm. And you can also purchase things from the cafe. Mm -hmm. Now, they are starting. It hasn't happened just yet as we record this video. Almost there. <laughs> they are starting to allow coach passengers to go into the dining car to purchase the traditional dining uh, meals. So what that means is... That's great for everyone in coach because they've been waiting and mm -hmm. wanting that. But what mm -hmm. that does mean is that there is community seating now in the dining car for coach and mm -hmm. sleeper car. So if you go two people like us, they're going to sit us on one side of the table and they're going to seat two other people with us on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it has been, you know, for the last couple of years, it has been kind of just, you know, each party had one table. Now they're putting more people together because they are opening up that space for the rest of the passengers on the train to have access to the dining car as they had before. So if that's something that, that you don't wanna do or you're not okay with, that's not a problem because you can always enjoy your meal in your room. We do it all the time, sometimes just for fun, like for breakfast, if we don't feel like you know, being out and about or we're not quite, you know, ready to mm -hmm. <laughs> be out in public, my hair sticking up or something, um, <laughs> then we just, uh, you know, hit that attendant bell and just tell them, hey, we'd like to have our food in our room. The attendant will bring it to you. So as if you're a sleeper car passenger and you want to have a meal in your room, you don't go get it in the dining room. You let your attend your room attendant know your room attendant will bring it, take your order and bring it to you. Yeah, and there is a charge for coach and business passengers to eat in the dining car. Mm -hmm. It is more expensive mm -hmm. than the cafe, mm -hmm. but it is a nice experience if you want mm -hmm. to do that. Once, I would probably not recommend paying the price they charge for the lunch. Right. I would pay for the dinner. Yes, uh, I agree. The breakfast is actually pretty good. It is. But <laughs> the lunch... I mean, it, you're basically going to end up with a cheeseburger or grilled cheese, mm -hmm. and you could get that from the cafe. Yeah. So save your money. Get those in the cafe. If you mm -hmm. want the experience, at dinner you can get the steak or the salmon, mm -hmm. all that kind of good stuff. So mm -hmm. that's probably yeah. the best way to go. Yeah, and then the next thing that people ask about as far as we're talking about meals is about tipping. Right. Um, what should I tip? Should I tip for the meals? Well, there's a couple different uh, kind of tipping paradigms of sorts. One is for tra for traditional, um, which is the full service, and one um, is for the flexible dining. So if you're on a train that has the flexible dining, which is more along the lines of um, like airplane food, so it's pre-prepared food and they heat it for you and you know you consume it so that's flexible dining traditional dining is cooked to order you know you get an appetizer you get your entree you get you know sometimes you get a roll or a salad and then you get your dessert as well as your beverages mm -hmm. so um you know they're two different things so what are what's the difference in what should be the difference you think in tipping between flexible dining and traditional dining well, I think you just tip a little bit more for traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what we do. And mm -hmm. generally it comes out for both of them around 2 to $3 per person per meal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
four to five dollars for the flexible, mm-hmm. five, six, seven dollars for the traditional is what we do. You can do anything you want though. There's people that don't tip, mm-hmm. there's people that tip ten dollars, mm-hmm. twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's totally up to you. I know that they appreciate the tips, so uh, it's not. It's not like a cruise ship, though, mm-hmm. where it's like, here's your tip. <laughs> We're telling you what your tip it's is. It's required. It's required. <laughs> There's no they, question. You don't even think about it. So <laughs> you just leave the tip, and uh, we leave it after each meal, mm-hmm. and that's just what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and while we're on tipping, I'll go over the room attendant mm-hmm. tipping, so don't forget about it later. But if you're in a sleeper car room, uh, we generally tip, and we usually do 5 to $10 per person per night Mm -hmm. so two night trip two of us that would be you know usually twenty dollars maybe thirty if it was really Mm -hmm. yeah it just depends Mm -hmm. um if it was one night you know maybe ten dollars twenty dollars something like that so that's Mm -hmm. what we do that is kind of the general consensus that Mm -hmm. we've seen there are people that of course don't tip Mm -hmm. there's people that Mm -hmm. will leave fifty or a hundred i'm sure Mm -hmm. uh so that's totally uh, up to you. Yeah. Uh, next thing we need to talk about is stops. Aha, yes. What happens at the uh, when the train stops? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you need Can you to go know... off and do something? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, and it depends on uh, the, you gotta know what type of stop you're at. So, right. There's basically three kinds of stops mm-hmm. that an Amtrak train will make. One is like a three minute stop, and that is like we're rolling up to a station. If anyone has to get off, they're jumping off, off. <laughs> and then we're taking right off. Yeah. Or if somebody has to just, they're just to getting on, then they yeah. hop on just however long it takes for people to get off and get on at that particular stop. Yeah. That's the, the most stops most of them, are yeah. that. Most of them are like that. If it's not a big city or a special mm-hmm. case. You're out in, you know. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. Wherever. So let's talk mm-hmm. about what happens there. First of all, if you're on the train, you can't get off. Uh, second of all, unless, unless it's your stop, <laughs> if you're getting on the train at those stops, you have to be really aware because the train is not going to pull up and look around for you. No. You need to be on the platform mm-hmm. and like when the train goes by, you need to be looking for there your train. There aren't always announcements for your train. Uh, we were sitting at, at the train station in Kissimmee and someone was you know, waiting for their train. And we were inside. We knew about what time our train would be there. So we were still waiting. So we waited inside because it was warmer outside. And this girl was sitting in there and she was just on her phone or whatever. And her train pulled up. People loaded onto it, kept going. There was no announcement or anything. Train left. And then they said, oh, so uh, that was such and such train then. There was an announcement. And she said, that's my train. I just missed my train. Because <laughs> yeah. she was just sitting in there. You do have to be very aware. Yeah. Be paying attention. Ask questions. Let them know, hey, what time do I need to be out there? Because at a lot of stations, it's just one attendant doing everything. So at this particular station, the attendant was doing the luggage, was doing the check-in, was doing, you know, offloading luggage from so she left the attendant to go get the luggage off the train for the people that were getting off the train so she couldn't make the announcement because she wasn't physically there so you know it it, it's hard in some stations some of them are are unstaffed so you're at a station where there's nobody there you you just have to be aware yeah like burbank california is Mm -hmm. unstaffed we Mm -hmm. get on there a lot and we do the train pulls up and you just have to be ready and so Mm -hmm. really you need to have the app because if you look on the app it'll tell you when the new expected arrival Mm -hmm. time is if the train Mm -hmm. is late that way you you pretty much know Mm -hmm. when it's going to get there but you got to ask be aware Mm -hmm. be looking at a big station like chicago new york you got no problem they're going to put everybody on the train Mm -hmm. the smaller unmanned stations you really need to know. So that's the first stop. Second stop <laughs> is what's called a fresh air break. Some Slash people, smoke break. Some people call it a smoke <laughs> stop. Um, and that is where it will stop for between, it's supposed to be 10 to 15 minutes, but if the train is late, it'll be more like seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where you can get off. And you, you get off and you can wander around on the mm-hmm. platform. You cannot leave the platform. It'll be really bad if you leave the platform because the train will go. Yep. Uh, so 
that one's nice. You can get off, stretch mm-hmm. your legs. Those are about every four to five hours. Mm-hmm. Give roughly. or take, depending on the route that you're on. Some routes, it, it can be a little bit longer. Yeah, and they'll announce those. Mm-hmm. And when they do announce those, if you want to get off, if you need to smoke, if you just want to get fresh air, mm-hmm. definitely go do that. Uh, because it may be another four hours before you can do it again. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, the announcements are always made about these stops. So always be listening. Don't, you know, plug your ears up the entire time because if you want to get off at some point, you're going to miss it. (laughs) You're going to think people are just getting off to go to their stop and just totally miss it. So be paying attention. And there's one more stop. What's the last stop? Yeah, the last stop is the crew change stop. Mm -hmm. And so when the, the crew has to change... Uh, to a new crew that's going to be an even longer Mm -hmm. stop and generally at those stops they're putting water on Mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things fueling up the train so that's going to be like a 30 minute stop Mm -hmm. and on that kind of stop they don't generally tell you but you can wander a little bit further Mm -hmm. but you need to confirm with someone like hey we're in Denver okay how long are we going to be here and then your person will tell you, all right, we're going to be here 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Then you know that you can wander a little bit away from the train. You still don't want to go far. Because mm-hmm. if you're not back when they call all aboard, they will not wait for you. They will not. And but, sometimes that's all it is. They don't always blow the horn. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. And you just hear an all aboard, all the staff that's out there with you yells all aboard. And then everybody just rushes back onto the train. If you are not there to hear them say that, you are going to be left behind and they will leave you behind. We have seen it happen several yeah. times actually. Yeah, so you don't, you don't want to wander much. Now, we have seen stops like uh, La Junta, uh, some other ones where it's- or like Albuquerque. Where it's just a really long stop mm-hmm. for a variety of reasons where maybe you're meeting another train and the train doesn't come in until an hour after you. Like the Texas Eagle does that, where it it mm-hmm. meets up with the, uh, uh-huh, Sunset, the Sunset Limited, Sunset Limited. Mm-hmm. and if both trains aren't there yet, they have to wait for the other right. train to get there. So you may be there three hours, right? You know? It just and, depends. And if that's the case, they'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, and there's a couple stops we've been on where they've said, "Hey, you can go into town, you can mm-hmm. buy some stuff, and mm-hmm. just just be back by yeah. two o'clock." Yeah, we've arrived to a stage one time. We got to somewhere in Oregon. I feel like got to a station like an hour and a half early, and we can't leave the station until the allotted time. So we have to stay there. So they said, "Well, just." <laughs> Go into town and grab a coffee if you want. They'll tell you when you can, um, you know, when you've yeah. got a long time. You just have to be paying attention though and listening. And if if you missed it or you know didn't hear something, make sure to ask a staff person. They will tell you because they don't want you to miss that opportunity. Right. Okay. Let's move on to uh, what to expect on the train. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, one of the things that you're gonna notice if you're on. Uh, cross-country route is there is an observation car Mm -hmm. and the observation car a lot of people don't know is for everyone on the train Mm -hmm. so sleeper car and coach passengers Mm -hmm. business class passengers everyone so if you're on a train which is going to be mostly a a cross-country train Mm -hmm. you have access to that sleeper car lounge Mm -hmm. no matter what your ticket is Mm -hmm. uh, and go down there and enjoy the the sights out of that because it is mm-hmm. it's a beautiful way to see it mm-hmm. and that is the upper level of where the cafe is going to be on the lower level right. of that mm-hmm. uh, so you can get your food go up there and eat and just see those sights and it's going to be mm-hmm. going to be nice yes and uh, another thing that we do get asked a lot about is um, is about charging you know your electronics if you are in coach there are two electronic outlets um, to charge things. They are both located on the wall by the window. Um, so if you are traveling with the person that's sitting in the window, that's easy. Just say, hey, I want to plug this in. But if you don't know the person that's sitting next to you by the window, even though you that's one of your plugs, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable with a wire going over the top of them. So just something to consider is to bring a portable charger with you and then you don't have to think about it if you want to if you want to sit in the aisle or if you have an assigned seat in the aisle 
or if that's just where you end up because the tr you know the train is crowded mm -hmm then definitely bring a portable charger with you. If you are in a sleeper car, then you will have just one outlet actually in that room for both of you. We always travel with our um, adapter and it's a universal adapter actually to use all over the world, but it has four USB plugs in it. And so we can charge actually five things at one time on that. And then the other place where you can charge things is if you have an observation car, you can charge things in the observation car. There are outlets all over the place, especially at the tables. I'm pretty sure there's two at the tables and then you'll see them throughout the train, throughout the observation car at the seats as well. And people always wanna know where we got our adapter or our backpack. And so we have a, a blog on our website, grindelectravel.com. Mm -hmm. It's right on the front and it says 20 things you need for your first Amtrak trip. Mm -hmm. That lists out everything we bring yes. with us that we actually use, <laughs> uh, that we have purchased and have found to be the things mm -hmm. that we use. So if you want to know some of those things, you can yes. uh, go to the groundoflifetravel.com uh, website, click that, and you'll see everything mm -hmm. that we use, including the adapters. Yeah. And then the last thing you probably have questions about is what happens when you get to your destination. Um, so depending again on the type of station that you're at, you are going to, so if you checked bags and you're like, well, where do I get my bag? Again, these are all things, they're very uh, communicative with you on the train. Always be listening to the announcements because as you're arriving to a station, especially if it's yours, they'll tell you, hey, this is where you get your bags. Sometimes like if you're uh, say in Tucson, Arizona, which we've gotten off at before, you're gonna get your bag train side. They're gonna take it off the train, you meet the, the baggage attendant and they will hand it to you. You hand them your ticket, they match it and you're off. Some stations uh, like say uh, New York or Chicago, you, you go to baggage claim just like you would at the airport. They have those little carousels and sometimes you have to wait a while. Some stations you have to wait longer the, than others like say Washington DC, I feel like you have to wait a longer time than mm -hmm. some of the other stations. Not really sure why, I'm sure it's a logistical issue, but I, I we've always had to wait a longer time whenever we've gotten bags at, at, in DC as opposed to like New York or Chicago. So there's a couple different ways. Again, they will tell you over the announcements where to collect your bag. So make sure you listen um, to where you have to get that, especially if you're not going to be at one of the bigger stations, you wanna know, hey, do I get it by the train? Do I get it in the station? Do I go get it outside, whatever. Yeah, and then I would say, another thing you need to be prepared for is the temperature on the train mm, mm -hmm. and, and you'll hear people say <laughs> the train is always hot or the train is always cold and that's just been their experience of mm -hmm. that one particular train so the truth of it is there's no way to know whether the train's going to be hot or cold it's probably <laughs> going to be one of those unless it's just the perfect temperature for you <laughs> uh, so my advice is to bring clothing that mm -hmm. will allow you to be comfortable if it's too hot yes. or if it's too cold. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is there is a thermostat for your car, your mm -hmm. actual car. Mm -hmm. And the room attendant has control of that thermostat. And from they'll set it, like let's say they set it at a certain temperature. Well, if three or four people come up to them and say, it is way too hot in this car, mm -hmm. they'll turn it down. And that makes the whole car cooler. Well, if you were fine to begin with, and then all these people complained, <laughs> now it's cooler, now you're cold. So now you need a sweater. And the opposite could happen. So unless you're kind of in the uh, average temperature range or everyone on the car, it's probably gonna get switched one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Now, you can adjust that from within your room. Mm -hmm. If uh, you're in a sleeper car, If you're in a sleeper yes. car, and it does make minor differences, but also, some of the cars do run a little hot. Some of them do run a little cold. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you always do hear people say, oh, the trains are so cold. Well, they were probably on one train that was cold. But the <laughs> next train they, they get on, mm -hmm. they might be too hot. Yeah. So you really just don't know. So if, you, that, if you're temperature sensitive, bring clothing to make yourself comfortable mm -hmm. in both scenarios yeah like i always have a cardigan like this one with me or i have a wrap it's in that same article blog that we wrote with the 20 things that we always bring it's a shawl i 
always travel with me. It's actually always tied to my travel backpack. I bring that with me. I also did a packing video um, and you'll want to see that as well as to what to bring on board with you. So that's here on the YouTube channel. Go see that as well. Um, you can search for it um, on Grounded Life Travel YouTube and um, pull up that packing video and kind of see uh, what all I carry in my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope this video has been uh, informative for you. We have a lot more information on the website or other past videos if you want to check out what it's actually like on the train. So if you like this video, please give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you on the next video.